and you know, and in this case, you know, I think that Joe Johnston and James Horner were the perfect pair. If you don't mind, I'd like to simply try to really put a shout out to how James worked uh, in the sense of that uh, the sketches for the Rocketeer were not uh, as complete as you might think, but he played the piano and you always got a cassette tape of James playing. And to this day, I understand more about the orchestra, more about the music, when I hear somebody that can play the piano, play the music, put the feeling into it, and you would find the spirit that what was ever missing in the sketch or not there, you would know it from him talking through it and how he played it. And yeah. that is just one of these things that I just encourage everybody. If you're orchestrating, if you're a composer, I like that far better than a stupid mock-up uh, because because the, the mock-up I find is imprisoning. A performance is something that frees you to actually sort of bring whatever you might have uh, and that you think, oh yes, that excites my imagination. It must excite his. So, because if I had to say one thing about working on, on the Rocketeer, uh, I don't know that the schedule is, uh, I think the first time I saw a sketch was April, around April 1st. And I'm and then I'm talking about still recording on May 9th and maybe that yeah, one recording. later. Yeah. Um, uh, but it was quite intense because, as you can see, the music is is pretty eh, kind of dense. Still great film music. But to relieve the humor of the sort of camaraderie, if you will, to sort of go, yeah, we're in this and, you know, we're going to do this. Because most of the times we would meet, I would go and meet Neufeld and Kaplan. This was at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning at John's house in Hollywood. And so I was living in Glendale at the time. No, I, I, I think maybe I was still in my, uh, in this place called, that I thought of as a Mondo del Condo, just nothing but apartment houses in Encino, uh, Newcastle. And I would uh, drive over the hill and uh, show up at John's place like at three in the morning when the prostitutes were still sort of going, going back to get breakfast and everything else. And all wow. the rest of it. It was a very, it was a very, um, colorful neighborhood shall i say yeah, yeah. i look very different today <laughs> and, and we would gather around the piano and i would sit down and we would go through sketches and various things and see what everyone had done and it was a, a colloquy about that i found interesting that john and elliot would have and i was invited in on discussing things because you know john used to sit there and, and that was what was very wonderful for me because um I, I felt like I got to um, learn from the best, if you will, and also learn a bunch of stuff that is not necessarily found in uh, orchestration books, mm -hmm. to have people of this kind. Of, and so, yeah, again, I, I think the, we miss it today because sometimes I don't think people are laughing too much or having much fun doing this. And I found that back in the days of pen and pencil, the humor was so grim that all you could do was laugh because <laughs> because again remember this is a time when no one heard a demo mm -hmm. no one knew what this was going to sound like it was nothing but black dots on yellow or white paper there was hope abounding that this was going to be great and all the rest of this and uh and and so once you showed up it was like oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> okay and 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 I mean, not to diminish demos because they they're very useful these days. Very few mistakes are made uh, at the scoring stage, I guess. But boy, that was something. That was that was something to, to to show up and after all that work to have this come out of the orchestra. Yeah. And I I would imagine Joe Johnson was knocked out too. I you know so it's just a very special time for me, but I think also for film. And James, uh, again, uh, you know, it's terrible to say, but the last time I shed a tear was uh, with a score from John, from John William, from James Horner. And he is very much missed. And with such a shame, uh, such a tragic, un needless death that robbed us of, I think, uh, some of the best music yet that he could have produced. Mm -hmm. Would like to have known what, move, what we'd think of movies today had James lived to make this kind of contribution to the films being made today, because I think his voice is, is missed and the silence is deafening in many ways.